Hey now, it's Brace for Impact, and I'm your host, Mike Gilbert, and I'm joined as always by JD by God Oliva. How you doing, JD? I'm really good, man. How you doing? Doing good, man. Doing good, man. Great week. Uh, great. Uh, lots of cool things happen. Lots of cool things happening in pro wrestling. Lots of cool things happening with this podcast right here. We uh, we are doing something kind of cool, kind of unique. I talked to our buddy BQ over at the Impact Lounge. And uh, we we're, we're gonna go ahead and upload this video to the Impact Lounge. So we welcoming him in the uh, Impact Lounge audience. He's got about seven thousand subscribers on YouTube. So welcome. If this is your first time listening to myself and JD, uh, come on, join us, man. Join us over on the Fight Game Media Network. We're in uh, Apple Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all your favorite podcast apps. So go ahead and check us out. Give us a download there. Give us a shout. We're Blue Wire guys now. Yeah, yeah, we're on the Blue Wire Hustle, or not Hustle, we're like the regular Blue Wire network now. So, yeah. Big time. We're big time now. That That is that is big time, man. There's some big time like NFL players and stuff mm-hmm. like that that are on uh, the Blue Wire network, so we're really excited about that. We um, are we are legit. We are a legit podcast and a legit podcast network, and uh, we're moving on up. Yeah, moving on up. So, uh, Impact Lounge, guys, why don't you go ahead and join us? And I know some of you guys recognize me from uh, the Impact Republic podcast that I've done with uh, with BQ in the past. He and I just have not been able to connect, but we I still wanted to be able to to do something cool for the Impact Lounge faithful and and produce some content for that channel. So, uh, I'm excited to be here on that on their YouTube this week. And then, as always, we're right here on the Fight Game Media Network on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all your favorite podcast apps. So, JD, man. Um, we had, I thought we had another solid, solid show this week. Um, what wasn't the best that I've seen recently, but I Mm. still thought that it was, that it was solid. I, you know, there was, you know, probably more talking than I would have preferred, although the talking was good, if that makes sense. But, uh, other than that, a solid effort tonight. What you want to hear a hot take? Let's hear it. Favorite episode of the year. Really? Huh? Really? I, I like the stories, man. I like yeah. good storytelling. And this was a super heavy. This is weird. This show and Dynamite were really similar this week. They right? they were. But really similar. Yeah. But Impact was taped like three weeks ago. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> yeah. Very good point. No, <laughs> yeah. it's like both shows were super heavy on storytelling this week. But mm-hmm. like for the best, like sometimes I think storytelling and wrestling gets a bad rap because Raw is so awful and it's nothing but buck, 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 buck for an hour. So mm-hmm. it like that gives like like long promos a bad rap. I thought yeah. both both shows this week did two extended talking segments that were really engaging. Yeah. I thought this was I thought this was a really good show this week. Like yeah. I thought Josh knocked it out of the freaking park, man. Oh I can't gosh. wait to talk about it. Like this was yeah. this was good TV. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I really did like the show. I still think that the episode after Hard to Kill was my favorite episode. So better wrestling. Did- Better yeah. wrestling on that one. For yes. Sure. So um, but if I had to rank them, I think this would be right behind it. But yeah, again, uh, another another good episode impacts on a roll in 2022. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll, we'll go ahead and kick it off with some uh, BTI talk. Uh, Lady Frost defeated Alicia. Cool. Yeah. And that's talking BTI. <laughs> you know, I, I they did show a clip in the actual episode. They did. And Lady Frost hit a uh, hit a moonsault that didn't even come close to Alicia. And that uh, was tender. <laughs> that is what they chose to go with. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's like you said, this show was shot weeks ago and they went, ah, we'll show the botched moon spot, moon salt spot that people could easily have missed by not watching BTI. Because let's be honest, you're not watching BTI. Yeah, but we're going to make sure we're going to make sure you see this <laughs> blown yeah. ass spot. It's a good call, yeah. guys. Yeah. I mean, like it, it's taped. They could just, you know, edit it out or whatever or just not show it. But they or do the WWE thing or do it again. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, do it again. Like they made. Dude, there's a story about Vince in the eight, in the eighties. He made the. I think it was the Brainbusters and the Heart Foundation or something like that. Wrestled yeah. twice on TV. Like the same taping. He was like, "No, not good enough. You're professionals. Go do that match again." And mm-hmm. they went and did the same match again. People were like, "What is going on here?" But they don't care. And like that's that. I mean, like I hate WWE, but it's that attention to detail that made them the market leader, mm-hmm. right? They don't have that attention to detail anymore. But like. No. That's the thing is like you don't and when you screw up, you don't have to shine a spotlight on it. And go, hey, look, we messed up. Don't I I don't know, man. One step forward or two steps forward, one step back sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I, I you know, I it, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. It was, it's not, just, it's but just you don't have funny, to, but you don't have right. to do it though. Like yeah. why shine? Yeah, they wanted to they wanted to present Giselle Shaw. That's their new signing. Um, they could have done that without showing the damn moonsault. <laughs> 
And the, and because she was on the show later. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I won't yeah. harp on this because it's BTI and BTI um, is doesn't matter. So, no. you know, why talk about it? Yeah. Despite having better production, it doesn't count. BTI. No. So uh, the show opened with Josh Alexander, the aforementioned Josh Alexander, who came down to the ring and said that for the last few weeks, he'd been out there to talk uh, about the Impact World title. But the one thing he cared more for was Impact Wrestling itself. He said that at no surrender, he'll go to war against Honor No More and then addressed Moose and Morrissey and said that he wants the next title shot. Um, and that brought up that while Scott Demore keeps telling him that he needs to keep his emotions in check, ah, see, he's smart. Morrissey is out there running wild. So he, I, I like the fact that he actually brought up that Morrissey is literally doing the same thing that Josh is being accused of. That's what so, we talked about. So we've been yeah. talking about for weeks. And I like, and I said at the time, this is on purpose. Mm-hmm. This is storyline. They're doing this intentionally. I was ahead. I'm going to come up, you know, I want my flowers. <laughs> got I it. was ahead on the Scott Demore is evil take. And yes. I was right. Cause like today it was a soft heel turn. It was like a heel, mm-hmm. like it was like a heel, like weave. Like we're not quite at the turn yet, but we're like, we're like, you know, we're, we're on the on ramp basically. Yeah. Like it's coming. Yep. Uh, Alexander said that no surrender. He'll defend impact, but whoever walks out with the title that night, he's coming to get them. Uh, And then all of a sudden, uh, big con, the former Connor, Connor, Connor uh, from the Ascension. Ascension. Yeah. Uh, Everyone's least favorite Legion of Doom ripoff. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Um, Comes down to the ring to absolutely no ovation. (laughs) Like the uh, the audience could not have gave less of a shit about uh, Big Con and what a creative name from old Big Con. You know what? My name was Connor, and I'm big. Big Con, it is. So congratulations on your the, creativity, pal. The Big Con. Yeah, sure. You know, I misread that at first because I don't read spoilers, and I thought it was Con from Ring of Honor of uh, oh. he of Shane Taylor Promotions, and that, I went, oh, oh, yeah. Well, that would have been That's cool. What I did. <laughs> But no, instead we get yeah, this. That would have been uh, cool. Yeah. So we get this uh, big jacked up eight with bad Tanner. So where where are we going to find more guys to blow the dust off of for Josh to squash? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Alexander knew why he was there, but he wasn't waiting another minute. So they start the match and then immediately Josh Alexander squashes him, gets him to tap out to the ankle lock um, well, in his street clothes, by the way. And then after the bell, Alexander kept the ankle lock on. Security comes out. Uh, Scott Demore comes down. Josh pushes him down, tries to while Demore's trying to calm him down. Uh, then the fans turn on Demore saying, you deserve it. Uh, give him the, the big chant. Um, and then after everything, go ahead. I'll say this for Big Con. He works quick. Like yeah. he got a full day's rate to come out, get squashed in 30 seconds. Yeah. Good, yeah. Good, yeah. Good, good it, for him, man. That is the Big Con, actually. Absolutely. That, that, was, that was good for him, man. We were in a con man business and that guy conned his way into some money, man. Yes, he did. Full full rate from impact for coming on and getting killed by Josh <laughs> Alexander and then going back to the golf course. So, you know, kudos to you, big con, sir. <laughs> yeah, he's back to whatever barker bar he bounces at. Mm-hmm. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so after everything calmed down, Demore talked to Alexander about their relationship and some sentimental stuff about Alexander's wedding. Um you know, uh, Demore was at Alexander's wedding. Uh, he was Ooh. married to Jade Chung. A little thick. Thing. Laid yeah. it on a little thick. Laid it on. But, you know, they're just they're laying yeah. it out there, man, saying, that, hey, look, it, this relationship didn't mm-hmm. start an impact. He's known this guy for a long time. He is mm-hmm. actually personal friends with him. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. So Demore. No. Yeah. So sorry. Yeah. Demore said he only cares about becoming a world champion and becoming the flag bearer of impact. He's tired of Demore's process, and he wants a shot or else he's gone from impact. Demore retaliated by suspending Alexander, telling him he's off no surrender, and said, you're going home. And then Josh Alexander gives the big, dramatic, impact wrestling is my home. And I, I, thought, I thought that was a cool line. Uh, but then Demore uh, said, no, Josh, you're a professional. You need to go home, man. And then that was, that was kind of the end of it, except for, you know, it was 20 minutes long. Uh, but it very was, good, good stuff, man. Great it, stuff. It, it was. I get I get hard on people who are bad acting in wrestling, and I thought this was pretty good actually. It was laid on a little thick, but again, it's pro wrestling. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Um. Okay. Did this like come up as like the Mustafa Ali thing to you? Like, let me do this thing, or I want to go. No, you're gonna go home. Like, right? Like, that's not Did that happened to Ali. He wants to do like he asked for his release, and they told oh. him no. 
right? Oh, okay. Like, I yeah. feel like this is a take on that. I mean, like, I'm not saying they're ripping it up. I'm saying it could be like creatively inspired by this because it happens a lot where guys request the release from WWE and they say, no, go home. Right. Right. Because well, like they, they have a lot of people, you know, out there. I, yeah. I don't know if it was uh, Mustafa Ali, but you know, a lot of people have, that had that happen to so. Mike Bennett. He have, he have currently of Impact Wrestling yep. famously. Like, so I feel like this story and I like it, by the way, I like when you can take stuff from real life and use it in fiction. That's good stuff. Yeah. I feel like this is in this is inspired from that, because usually in wrestling, when when these things happen, the guys like, well, let me have this or, or I'm going to go. You don't hear that very often. Right. Mm. And I do. I do wonder if the uh, the the Brandy Road shout out last week isn't part of this whole masterfully woven tale but for you know yeah well you, you brought it up that maybe ethan page was just kind of like doing josh a solid here i think uh, I'm, there's just, nothing there's nothing about this week's segment that leads me to believe otherwise yeah so i i think that uh, you could be right and they're really really laying it on thick so thick in fact that i I don't believe for a second that Josh isn't signed. Although, no. although if you follow my social media, I am stirring the pot a little bit because Impact fans are they get so mad at that stuff. So, and I've quite enjoyed it. You know, far be it from Brace from Impact to not be clickbait. <laughs> we are we embrace <laughs> yeah. the clickbait. Yeah. We totally, dude. I wrote an article a couple weeks ago specifically to get people to click on our web our podcast. Yeah, <laughs> there's no other reason yeah. but to give a shout out to the podcast. So we are scumbags. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially. Um, because I, I had a, a whole article a couple of weeks ago that like, I, I, it didn't break records for the, for the site. I think did that well. record, it did well. I think JD owns the record for the Omega article. I don't think that's ever getting broken. I do. <laughs> but, um, and the headline was uh, Josh, Josh Alexander's off no surrender taking dates that weekend. Could he be leaving or something like that? Just something it's great. Super, it was know, very, great. it was very, I don't want to say fightful ask, yeah. but fightful ish. You <laughs> yeah. know, it yeah. was good. I liked it. It was good. And then I, I got a lot of replies on it. Like uh one one guy was like, uh, maybe he's just taking time off for his family. Like he legit thought that. And I was like, because he only read the the headline. And I was just like, dude, in the story, he said he's accepting bookings. Unless he's accepting bookings at his house. This isn't like him, like, you know, th- this is yeah. actually he's actually now, taking that would be the big con. Yeah. <laughs> if you got booked at your own house, that would be that would be something. I'm convinced the vast majority of people that reply to Twitter po- like Twitter posts have never ever bothered to click on the article. Oh no, and you know I'm guilty of that. I I Me shared too. an art I shared an article earlier today with some dumbass football player saying uh, the article was about uh, this football player from the from the the I almost say the Commodores, but the Commanders. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I almost said the Commodores, but he said I guess he was asked like you didn't ask me anything. He said if uh, you know who would you uh, name three people alive or dead that you'd like to have? I saw with? that. Yeah, and one of the people was Adolf Hitler, um, and then he of course appropriately deleted the tweet and apologized, and so. I, I didn't actually read the article because when I responded to it, I was like, well, who are the other two people? Genghis Khan and George W. Bush, you know, like, but I liked it. I liked it. I, I, that was, that was clever. But in the article, I actually told you who he named. So I'm, I'm guilty too. I did the same thing. I responded Jeffrey Dahmer and Pol Pot because, <laughs> yeah. you know, I also did not read the article because I am, a, I do enjoy kicking a man while he's down. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So, backstage, uh, Steve Macklin uh, confronts uh, Scott Demore and says he wants in on Team Impact, which makes sense because the Honor No More attacked him last week. Demore told him that it'd be up to Team Impact to decide who was taking Alexander's spot. Um, and I'm all, I'm all for a, a Macklin push here. So, we, we love Steve. Big, big Macklin podcast here. It's interesting. It's yeah. interesting. Lots yeah. of uh, lots of like 96 WCW stuff going on in this episode. A lot of who can you trust? Who's going to get lawn darted into the side of the trailer? Uh, VSK. Oh, yeah. He takes a good beating. Yeah, yes, he I, does. He, and he did tonight, boy. Yes, Ooh, he did. He looked great. Yes, um, he did. Ring of Honor women's champion, Deanna Perrazzo, defeated the returning former nxt star i i don't want to actually maybe i shouldn't call her a star of nxt star. she definitely was on the show though um and she was wasn't so santana garrett i'm sorry i didn't even mention the name santana garrett she was in impact before and i think she might have been a tag champion with somebody i'm not sure Are i think sure? she was i think she was an impact before 
She is um, under the her. Go ahead. It says, I'm sorry. It says it right here. She originally competed for Impact under the name Brittany. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. I'll yeah. take. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, so her and Deanna, this stuff that's interesting. Like I, I was an old Taz show listener. Mm-hmm. Her and Deanna and I think it was Veda Scott used to have a segment on the Taz show. Where they talked about independent wrestling and like they were up and comers at the time. And this is in 2016. Yeah. And I still feel like Santana, like I still see people calling her green and I can't like argue with them, you know? Yeah. You know what, though? Um, I, I got to say, so obviously Perazzo won the match. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw some people bagging on this match. I th- I thought it, it was bad. pretty good. I thought it was a pretty good match. And I thought, um, you know, Peraza looked great as usual, but yes. I was just like, um, I thought Garrett looked better than I had seen her whenever I watched her. Like I only saw her a couple of times in NXT. She didn't do much there, no. but I, I thought she looked better than she did there. I thought she looked she, pretty good. She wrestled for AEW to September when they had that, uh, the Danielson Suzuki match, right? Same, yeah. same card. And I didn't think she looked great there. I'm going to tell you something. I think, that her and Deanna probably worked out together a bunch down at the prone center. Mm-hmm. And I'll be, I, I am of the mind that Deanna kind of carried her to a pretty good match in this one. Cause mm-hmm. I have never really been much of a fan, but this was probably one of the better matches I've seen from old Santana Garrett. And I don't yeah. expect her to come back. You know? Yeah. So a lot of people work this taping that normally don't work impact and Florida you, locals, yeah. Florida locals, big con, obviously big con. Um, local guy. Um, I think a lot of it was, hey, look, we have all these local. We're going to bring in some locals to do some jobs. Um, which makes is, sense. Which makes sense. But also, I think there was more than usual because Impact had some COVID issues. So as you've noticed, we have not what? seen Willie Mack. We haven't seen yeah. Heath. We haven't seen a few people. So a lot of that going around right now. Or actually, there's not a lot going around. We're actually oh. on the down. We're on the yeah. down slide. Oh mm-hmm. man, uh, you know, I don't want to get too. Did you just get a message to... or something. You just reacted like you had a uh, action I, going there. No, I got some good news about COVID earlier today from our from our doctors oh. here and our commander here, and said that we are going to be starting the endemic phase. So, what the endemic phase means is we're going back to normal life. <laughs> so, like, oh, it's can't wait. Yeah, it, it basically means COVID is the flu now. Um, and it's not ever going away. So the flu is still technically in the endemic phase. So we, mm-hmm. we got it. We got it during World War One. It's been here ever since. It's just a part of normal life. And th- I think that we're preparing for that. And that's what that's what our people told us here in our clinic. So and so like winter time will now be cold and flu in COVID season. So yeah, yeah. And then like Booster. every every year, like old people can go to Walgreens and get their annual COVID shot. You know what I mean? Like they people- do for the flu shot. Old people, my yeah. ass is going to be there every November before <laughs> wrestling season going. Yeah. Put it right here, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This good. Good thing this is a video podcast because that could have been taken the wheelie the wrong way. Oh, this yeah, week. yeah, yeah. They could point out any a part of your anatomy that they thought you were getting a any, shot at. So. Any orifice they would like, but yes, <laughs> yeah. Here's yeah. to the endemic. Yay! It's only been two years. Can you believe it's been almost two freaking years? Ah, man, I can't wait till this crap's over. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, Team Impact met with Scott Demore about replacing Alexander. Uh, they tried to get Alexander reinstated, but Demore told him to pick a partner. Chris Saban asked Demore to have Jonathan Gresham join Team Impact, and uh, basically Demore said, "You go talk to him." Um, and then next we get Chelsea Green defeating Knockouts Champion Mickey James via DQ in a non-title match. Um, I would say if there was a match that wasn't very good, it's probably this one. It you know ended in a DQ. Uh, Tasha Steeles and Savannah Evans they were on commentary. They, Tasha was pretty funny. Um, but short, fa- short match, not much happened. And then, uh, got the DQ there. And, uh, now I think they're going to have a tag match probably next week or something. Tasha was the only thing likable about this segment. Yeah. By the way, did you see the article today on fight? Speaking of fight, the saying that Mickey thinks that the WWE and impact can, can have a long partnership together and they'll be uh, doing more stuff. Uh, I'd pump the brakes on that one there, Mickey. Maybe, maybe she's just being optimistic. I don't know. Maybe she'd like a job. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, she uh, she's been out of the Fed since what July? July. She probably misses those checks hitting that mailbox every every week, right? So those big fat checks, randomly getting royalty checks, you know that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah, she pro- she probably misses it. She's got a family. She's mm-hmm. got she's got a mortgage. You know that stuff is important. Big old ranch, as we saw on yeah. the show earlier this year. Yes, hmm, interesting. Yeah, this seg- this segment was not good. No, no. If there was a down part, like I, you know, spoiler alert, if 
tomorrow when my article comes out, there's only going to be one miss and it's going to be this. <laughs> so is it controversy? I'm kind of over Mickey as knockouts champion. Like I'm over the nostalgia value of it. Um, I was over it heading into hard to kill, but then I thought that it was important to keep the title on her because of the Royal Rumble. The stuff. Royal Rumble. Yeah. Now, now that the Royal Rumble is over, I, I hope she loses it soon. I hope Tasha wins it. Honestly. I do too. Um, Tasha's been doing. Tasha's been make as Jim Ross likes to say, making the most of her minutes. Yeah, she's Tasha's great, man. I think yeah. she's a star. Uh, you know, Illa sent me a message, and he likes my catchphrase for her. Tasha steals the show. I, oh. I, I'm like, we're gonna go ahead and coin that one. That was good. coming coming soon to pro wrestling tees. Absolutely. Um, hey, maybe we'll cut her in on that. Maybe. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we got uh, Gia interviewing uh, Bupinder Gujar about joining Impact. He said he finally achieved his dream of being a pro wrestler, and he was happy to represent India and Impact. Uh, Raj Singh approached him to congratulate him, uh, but once again, Gujar ignored him and walked away. So there's a little something going on there between those two cats. So uh, we'll we'll see what's up with that here pretty soon. I'm sure. This could have been on BTI. Yeah. Uh, the inspiration approached Caleb and asked him if he was uh, enjoying the phone they got him last week, and they talked him into taking uh, photos of them, at which point he was caught by Madison Rain. So a little jealousy going on. Uh, Caleb pretended he was tricked, but Rain still scolded him. So Caleb's turning, right? Like that's, and I actually kind of like this. This is stupid, mm-hmm. but again, Caleb Conley is, um, is an artist. Like he can just make art out of whatever anyone gives him. <laughs> the man is incredible. Like, yeah he's turned and he's going to, I mean, like, I actually think he would be, I think his gimmick would be much better with them and they could actually be re- actually funny together. Like, yeah, well, I think this works. Well, because the inspiration, they have these larger than life personalities that to and Madison don't have. And Caleb has that too. So he fits in better with them. They, I think all three of them would make each other better. So I think um, Caleb kind of carries the act with the influence, to be honest with you. He does. He, no, he, abso- he absolutely yeah. does. Like the rain and Tennille are good at certain things, but they mm-hmm. were not good um, being a parody of the inspiration. So <laughs> I think, I think that uh, that ship has sailed and it's time to move on from them. It's like when the road warriors felt the powers of pain, but a lot worse. Yeah. Um, next, uh, we get the Bullet Club, Violent by Design, and the Good Brothers segment. Another really good segment. Um, and I'm not going to run down everything that was said because that would just take forever. We'd be here forever, yes. Yeah, we'd be here forever. But I wanted to point out certain things. I thought Jay White was tremendous in this segment. Um, I thought this was the best appearance by Jay White all week on primetime television. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I know you, you were very cold on the uh, Jay White dynamite appearance. I thought it was fine for what it was. They just wanted yeah. you to go, Hey, Jay White. Like yeah. that was pretty much all they wanted. Right. You know? and, and I, and you know, I, I can actually, I want to get more into that when we, when we go to our Patreon segment, I think that's like our lead story. Okay. But yeah, I, I do, I do have thoughts. I, but I spoiler, I, it wasn't bad. It really, it really, it was like a small segment. So it, it didn't really, it didn't really mean a whole lot. So, Whereas here he carries the segment and like he yeah. really gets to show how one, how great is honestly, this is the best Jay white promo I've heard since the one he cut at wrestle after wrestle kingdom last year, where mm-hmm. he was talking about retiring. I thought he was absolutely fantastic tonight. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, dude. He hit all of his catchphrases. He looked like he was, he came across as the biggest star in the building and it's probably cause he is. Well, <laughs> just, there's a reason for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he looked great here. I thought Eric Young was really good. At he one was. point, Eric Young started doing a Ric Flair impression, but I don't think he meant to, but it just kind of, it just kind of came off that way. Um, and Eric, then, Young, uh, Eric Young goes, I don't live in the past. And I was thinking that's really good because you won a bikini contest once on this show. So <laughs> yeah. don't mind, we don't want to bring that up. He played the cowbell while Mickey James was singing hardcore country one time. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. it's a good thing. Eric doesn't live in the past. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I thought this whole thing was, uh, was really good overall. Um, it was, Tong- it was great. Tong- Tonga Lo was pretty good. Uh, mm-hmm. He had some good singers on the good brothers. Uh, there was one where um, the good brothers were bragging about how they had tag team champions all over the place. He goes, we, they were like, we've been everywhere. And he goes, yeah, you've been fired, fired. everywhere. Um, <laughs> so, you got fired clap, yeah. clap 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 it was good it was real and they served him up for it too like it was mm-hmm. it's actually one of the best tangaloa promos i've heard i thought he was great usually tama does you know carries the load on those things and yeah. tanga got to show yeah. a little bit i think these guys are right at home in this promotion to be honest with you yeah and um you know more more on this later but i think they're also free agents so yeah i noticed that 
Yeah, yeah, on Twitter. Yeah, God's free agent. So, um, but yeah, very, very, very good. Um, leading to a six uh, six man tag or trios match with the Violent by Design taking on the God and Jay White next week, and we also got um, the EY versus Jay White match and No Surrender coming up, which I think is going to be a very good match because, as we all know, Eric Young is one of the most underrated performers in the history of wrestling, and when he doesn't get what he does, he gets a lot of compliments about his acting ability and his acting chops, but he is actually a very good wrestler too. So he is, I hope we get the, um, I hope we get like the 2018 Jay white. Cause like he's, if you watch new Japan over the last couple of years, he stalls a lot. Mm-hmm. He does a lot of heat stuff. And um, I don't know if that's the, what you want to get for this. Aud- I don't know, man. I yeah. love Jay white, but uh, sometimes he goes way too like, get heat heavy like work the crowd like way like yeah really really working them so i hope that uh i hope we get a little bit of the older switchblade when he wrestles you because that could be a really fun match that potentially steal the show actually well we're gonna get babyface switchblade which we have not gotten in a very long time not long since joined the bullet club mm-hmm. so and they're they're working babyface here and they're good baby faces too i the crowd i forgot uh, how good i forgot how good a per- babyface promo jay white is yeah, like he's good. He's very good. Um, we went backstage. We saw uh, Jonathan Gresham had been taken out and in need of medical assistance. Um, so Otter No More took him out. So he's not going to be the partner. Then we saw Matt Cardona turning heel last week, attacking Jordan Grace with a chair to win the Digital Media Championship. Miller asked him if he had uh, had some words about his win last week. Um, a controversial win, she said. Cardona said he was screwed and hard to kill and he didn't get a rematch. And so he decided he wanted this title, the Digital Media World Championship, which I love. That's a good line. Um, There wouldn't be wrestlers vlogging, playing video games on Twitch, making YouTube shows if it wasn't for him, which he is the starter of all of that. He's at least the first guy I've ever known to do stuff like that. So it's true. He told Grace to bring it at no surrender because he's always ready. So, so I was right. This was the yeah. plan. That was the the rider plan all along. Was to turn <laughs> heel in the match. Yeah, yeah. He he had this whole thing plotted out, but he did say he did say that he had been in the ring from with everybody from Roy Fox to the Nature Boy Ric Flair himself. But Jordan Grace was as tough as opponent ever, and he felt he needed to do a little something extra in that match to get the title. So. Doesn't say much for John Cena, does it? <laughs> no, you no. kind of shit on John Cena, but mm-hmm. John John Cena's got Peacemaker. He doesn't care anymore. He's so. dealing with butterflies. Yeah. Uh, OGK, Matt Matt Taven and Mike Bennett with Honor No More, defeated Rich Swan and Rhino. So uh, glaring omission here is Heath and uh, Willie Mack. I think they might have been out for COVID reasons. Um, so let's see. Oh, Maria Canellis Bennett joins the, the commentary. Um, at some point, uh, Team Impact and on the more they they are told by the referee they got to get out of there because they've been interfering in the match. Um, Taven and Bennett took control and cut off Swan after distractions. They worked over worked him over with the constant quick tags and double team moves, but couldn't keep him down for a three count. Swan managed to make a comeback and use a bit of miscommunication between the OGK to tag and Rhino, who came in and almost hit the gore, but Maria blinded him with powder, uh, setting him up for Taven for the win. And then after the match, OGK took down Swan and talked trash to Ring of Honor head Kerry Silken, who was at ringside. They threatened to attack Silken, and when Macklin ran down for the save, Macklin took out Taven while Rhino finally hit the gore to Bennett. Um, I I thought this the whole thing was strong overall. I thought it was a decent match. I feel kind of bad for Rhino right now. He seems like he is hurting, man. He does yeah? He he really looks like he's he's beat up. But again, he's like fifty, right? Like he's. Yeah. He's been around, man. So I agree. I did like this. I like old school because like powder in the eyes, man, that's that's old. <laughs> like we don't see that anymore. Like yeah. I, I like it. I, I enjoy it. I like Maria doing it. Like, again, this is I don't know. There's just been this old school flavor in wrestling this year, like everywhere that I really I really enjoy. Like I like not trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, I'm calling it now. Carrie Silken is behind all of this because mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they're going to. I- they're going to bish off him. And I, after Ian, Ian's in there like, what you should guys should take Macklin on your team. Like, why is Ian Riccoboni advising in this situation at yep. all? Where, where is your loyalty loyalty lies, sir? Like mm-hmm. this whole thing, this whole thing is very Bischoff Sullivan esque. Like I said, this is, I got very WCW 96. Who can you trust vibes all over the place on this on both teams? So. Yes. 
Yes, because yeah. Eddie's Eddie. I don't trust you. Who are you? He's big old dipping during this, which I you know that's also old school. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, I just I liked I liked everything about this whole segment. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, yeah and uh, and somebody brought I think it was Zilla. He brought it up. Um, was Gresham faking? Was Gresham I, actually taken out? I don't know, I don't man. Know. I don't know. It's definitely it reeked of that that whole thing. Really, really reeked of like. Some you'd see in WWE where they go backstage and the guy's just like, like old, like yeah. old WWF, like in the nineties, like when it was like tolerable, like I liked everything about this, like this, mm-hmm. this seg, this particular angle is just carrying the promotion for me right now. And I love everything about it. It's so good. It's, it's so good. It's carrying them so much that it still continues to outshine the bullet club story. Um, sure. Because the Bullet Club just kind of appeared, and now they have matches, right? But they they're starting to get to the Good Brothers and God, which I do think is is a story that they can tell. I agree, and I think this week we got kind of the Bullet Club mission statement because, like you said, we got Babyface Switchblade and yeah. Babyface God, which we don't get that in New Japan like ever, like not since Kenny was you know on top, right? That's mm-hmm. the last time Bullet Club were like kind of baby faces over there. So. This was good. I felt like because I felt like it was blending together. And I really liked that this week we really got a separation from what Bullet Club is to what I don't know more is like everything feels at this moment. It feels different. It feels like it's moving in different places. So I'm actually this is again. This is why I'm happier with this episode than the last couple of weeks. because I really felt like stuff started to separate a little bit and, and things were trying to find their water level. I was man. I love this segment. I was surprised it wasn't the main events. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you mentioned it earlier, but um, Ian Riccoboni and Silken talked backstage when Macklin walked up. Uh, they thanked him. Uh, Macklin said he did it because he had beef with Honor No More. Eddie Edwards didn't want Macklin on the team. That's Eddie's turning. Uh, but Riccoboni vouched for him. So little known fact, Riccoboni went to train at the Monster Factory, and that's where Steve Macklin trained. So that's how they know that. One, I did not know Riccoboni trained. That's actually very interesting. Yeah. Two, where does Ian Riccoboni get off giving impact device for anything? That's you- right. You snake, you weasel. I love He's, this angle. I absolutely yeah. love this angle. <laughs> uh, with reluctance, Team Impact welcomed Macklin to the team. So I thought the whole segment was strong. And I thought Macklin was great here too. Um, Jim Miller interviewed well, Giselle. Macklin's, I like Macklin Rub. Yeah. Well, so I like the Macklin Rub. I like, I like him doing this. This is great. Yeah. Uh, Miller interviewed Giselle Shaw about stealing Lady Frost Spotlight. She says, I can't steal what's mine. Talking about the spotlight. So she's going to wrestle Frost next week. <coughs> Speaking of which, next week we got Giselle versus Lady Frost, Mickey James and Chelsea Green versus Tasha Steeles and Savannah Evans, Chris Saban versus Kenny King, which should be pretty good. Yes. Um, and uh, Bullet Club versus The Violent by Design, uh, which will likely be the main event. So our, our man Ella made a nice little comment about Giselle Shaw in the group chat that I cannot repeat. No, but I get it. No, I I get it, and I uh, I I think he is right. So I I don't I get I looked and I said yeah maybe maybe that's mm-hmm. a little inside baseball for you, but um yeah. I don't know I want to see Giselle Shaw in the ring. Um I was not I wasn't over the moon with the uh, the promo. I want to see what she. I've never seen ring John Laraca swears by her. I just want to see what she can do. Well, if Laraca swears by her, then uh you know I I'm very interested in what she's got. So. Mm-hmm. Um, next we get uh, Debbie Morrissey defeating Brian Myers and the flock. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, the- <laughs> this was uh, very, that was, <laughs> like very- Myers is dressed exactly like Raven. And then he's yep. got his lackeys coming out. You got Lenny and Lodi coming 100%. out. hundred <laughs> percent. So, uh, Zicky dice is definitely Lodi. And I guess maybe VSK, he kind of looks like sick boy. He's a little that. sick boy. He's yeah, a little yeah. Scott Vick. Yeah. Sick but I, I, I loved it. So, Morrissey's coming down to the ring and then VSK just runs up the ramp and gets his ass kicked immediately. Just great stuff. They are doing such a good job of building up Morrissey for this title match. Mm-hmm. He, he is just, he's flat out. Awesome. The people were with him. Um, they, they, uh, they end up attacking the guy uh, attacking Morrissey and then they put up two to a table on each side of the ring. And then immediately Zicky dice goes to the damn table. Uh, Cause he's an idiot. Cause he's Zicky dice. Cause he's Zicky dice. And then on the other side, um, they actually put him on the table, but it breaks. Well, and it's because he's super heavy, right? Uh, it, the whole thing actually worked. And uh, so they 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 beat him up some more. They have the table just kind of leaning up against the ring. And then Morrissey gets off of it, knocks out Myers, grabs uh, VSK, throws him off the top rope through the table, and just smashes it all to hell. It looked pretty it's sick. Dude. It was great. 
great, great, great spot. So he's taken out both the dice and VSK. Uh, Morrissey and Myers went back and forth with weapons, but even after many kendo shots from Myers, Morrissey kicked out at one. Uh, Myers attacked Morrissey with a trash can lid, followed by duct taping Morrissey to the ropes, and then just beat the holy hell out of Morrissey. But Morrissey kept coming back for more. Uh, just when Myers thought he could uh, he could get the pin, he actually cut Morrissey off from the uh, the duct tape, went for the roster cut, but Morrissey came back with a big lariat, a corner splash trifecta, and a big boot. Morrissey hit the BOE, but instead of going for the pin, he brought out thumbtacks and hit the hit a third BOE for the win. So after the match, then Moose attacked Morrissey with the title belt, choked him with a chair, wrapped it around Morrissey's neck, and hammered it with a second chair. And then he falls down to the ground. He's le- got his face leaning on the chair, and he hits him again with kind of a concerto thing, um, which looked really, really cool. Just a great segment overall, really fun. Morrissey came across like a badass. Moose comes across like the biggest shit heel in the world. Um, just great, great stuff. Lots of heat this week on Mid South Impact. Yeah, yeah, which is a compliment, by the way. One hundred percent. I love it, Mid South. That's yeah. that's like one of the highest things I can say for a television show. Like this was, I man, this was such a good segment. This is a guy in Morrissey who four years ago the WWE programmed him with Daniel Bryan on his return, and everybody went, "What the fuck?" Mm-hmm. Right? Like this guy pissed his career away, and everybody wrote everybody wrote him off. And I don't think there's a better comeback story. Uh, yeah, no, because those guys weren't gone. No, this guy came back this year. Yeah. 2021 was a great comeback story for, for Morrissey. And he's just proven to be an MVP level player here, man. I think he's been, I think he's been fantastic. Just uh, absolutely tremendous. Everything he's done has been great. They have really built him up. Great. He looks like he is a th- really threat to the title. And he could be a guy that they can get behind. I know they're going to lead towards, you know, Moose and Josh Alexander, but you know, they, I think they got something here in Morrissey, man. He's great. I think you got a bound for glory match with uh, Morrissey and, and Josh Alexander down the line that you can keep these guys apart and eventually bring them together. And you can actually have a money drawing match. Like, yeah. I think they're doing a great job building both these guys up. Like it's, um, it's great, man. I, I never thought I would feel this way about big casts. Uh, and you know, here um, we are. A lot of people that don't really watch impact. They see, they see him and they're like, Oh my God, they're pushing him. And I have to be like, no, you don't understand. That's not Big Cass. Yeah. That's W. Morrissey. He's a completely different character, and he's completely rebuilt himself up uh, to be in something really good. The only person I, <clears throat> I could compare him to was when, remember Drew McIntyre when he left WWE, mm-hmm. and he was a joke, right? Yep. And then Impact picked him up, and he was doing stuff with ICW and every Evolve, and the Drew Galloway character really blossomed, right? Mm-hmm. And I loved Drew Galloway's indie work before he went back to WWE. It was great. I think Morrissey is on that level right now. As far as a character, as far as work goes, it's very comparable to like 2016 Drew Galloway. Yeah, no, absolutely. He's he's uh, he's great. Promos are great. The matches are getting better. Mm-hmm. Um, he is not going to be Kenny Omega, but he's also no. seven feet tall. He ain't got to be. So no, um, nor should he be. No, but hey, uh, everybody, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts and Spotify for free, uh, go ahead and. Uh, Hook, uh, hang out with us oh and on the impact lounge on youtube as well if you're checking us out there for free cool it was great talking to you this week um if you're interested we're getting ready to uh keep the conversation going over on fight game media network plus it's our premium subscription service head over to patreon.com slash fight game media it's five bucks a month uh not only do you get this kind of content we got mma boxing aew wwe everything that you could think of uh, classic content we have it all man five dollars a month so come over and check us out uh, right now we're going to keep the conversation going over there uh well we got some news we're going to talk uh jay white talk uh lance storm we're going to talk some josh alexander um and then we're going to talk about an interesting topic that old john alba from ad free shows brought up uh that started a whole controversy about uh dave Meltzer star ratings and tna wrestling so we're, we're going to get into that a little bit so jay's rolling his eyes if you can't see but uh yeah this should, should be a fun conversation so check us out over there but if not we'll, we'll check you guys next week all right later